Population genetics is the study of allele, genotype, and phenotype frequencies in populations. Strictly speaking, we should use the term proportion since frequencies is ambiguous. A frequency can refer to either the absolute number of something or its proportion, but it's too late to change the phrase now since it's been used for so long. It's useful to keep this in mind, however, since proportions can never be larger than one while frequencies in other contexts can. Any allele, genotype, or phenotype frequency we calculate must have a value between zero and one. From now on, I'll refer to the proportions as frequencies, but keep this in mind. When doing population genetics, evolution is defined as the change in allele frequencies. There are other definitions in other parts of evolutionary biology, but when doing population genetics, this is the one we use. There are a ton of things that are done in population genetics, but a common activity is calculating one set of frequencies from another. If we have data for just one set of frequencies, from observations that give us the phenotype frequencies or genetic data that gives us the genotype or allele frequencies, can we calculate the other frequencies and how would we do this? Let's look at these three frequencies in more detail to make sure we're clear on what each of them are. Let's think about a set of individuals which has two phenotypes, tall and short, as shown on the left. Each of these individuals has one of three different genotypes, capital T, capital T, capital T, lowercase s, and lowercase s, lowercase s, as shown in the center. Or we could ignore the individuals and just think about the two different alleles which are segregating within the population, as shown on the right. This example is for when the tall allele, capital T, is dominant, which means that the lowercase s allele is recessive. You can watch the video on dominant versus advantageous alleles if you're not clear on this concept. There are two phenotypes, tall and short. The T allele is dominant, so the capital T homozygous and capital T lowercase s heterozygous genotypes are tall, but the lowercase s homozygous genotypes are short. The frequency of the tall individuals is 6 out of 9, or 0.66, whereas the frequency of the short individuals is 3 out of 9, which is 0.33. The frequencies of these genotypes would be 2 out of 9, 0.22 for the capital T homozygous genotype, 4 out of 9 for the heterozygous genotype, 0.44, and 3 out of 9, 0.33, for the lowercase s homozygous genotype. The frequency of the T allele is 8 out of 18, or 0.44, and the frequency of the S allele is 10 out of 18, which is 0.55. When we actually calculate allele frequencies, we typically define a couple of variables to represent them, the most common ones being P for the frequency of the first allele, the capital T allele in this case, and Q for the frequency of the second allele, the lowercase s allele. Note that it's not always capital and lowercase, just an arbitrary choice of one and the other. Keep these two variables in mind and what they represent, allele frequencies, as we go. This is the same scenario as before, but now we're going to show some useful equations. First, since there are only two alleles, the sum of their frequencies must be 1. This means that P plus Q equals 1, and this is always true. Second, a minor mathematical proof shows that since P plus Q equals 1, then p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1, and this is always true as well. Third, since there are only three genotypes, the sum of their frequencies must be 1. This means that the frequency of the capital T homozygote plus the frequency of the heterozygote plus the frequency of the lowercase s homozygote equals 1, and this is always true. Finally, if the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, those last two results line up, and the genotype frequencies are frequency of capital T capital T equals p squared, frequency of capital T lowercase s equals 2pq, and frequency of lowercase s lowercase s equals q squared. This is only sometimes true, however. Students often think that you can always use these equations to predict the genotype frequencies from just p and q, but you can only use them when you know the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So what is Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? Simply put, it's when no evolutionary forces act on the population. You can see our other video that talks about Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium if you're not 100% comfortable with what that means. To use this concept, consider a population and two alleles, capital A and lowercase a, where P equals the frequency of capital A and Q equals the frequency of lowercase a. If there are no evolutionary forces acting on the population, then the frequency of the capital A homozygous genotype is P squared, the frequency of the heterozygous genotype is 2PQ, and the frequency of the lowercase a homozygote is Q squared. However, if there are evolutionary forces acting on the population, this correspondence is not guaranteed, and the frequencies of the genotypes may differ from these values. This has two important consequences we need to keep in mind. First, we cannot use p squared, 2pq, and q squared to estimate genotype frequencies unless the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, sometimes abbreviated with the acronym HWE. Second, we can use this to learn about a population that we're interested in. 
we can compare the frequencies of the genotypes to p squared, 2pq, and q squared to determine if the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium or not. In other words, is the population we're studying experiencing evolutionary forces or not? If the observed genotype frequencies match those predicted from the p squared, 2pq, and q squared equations, then the population is almost certainly at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and not experiencing evolutionary forces like selection or sortative mating. On the other hand, if the observed genotype frequencies do not match those predicted from the equations, then the population isn't at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and must be experiencing one or more evolutionary forces. Comparing observed genotype frequencies to the predicted ones is a useful tool for learning about natural populations. Let's go back to our tall and short alleles and phenotypes and use these results. First, let's think about calculating phenotype frequencies from genotype frequencies. For this, we can sum the genotype frequencies that correspond to each phenotype. In this case, we would sum the frequency of the capital T homozygotes and the frequency of the heterozygotes to get the frequency of the tall phenotype. And the frequency of the lowercase s homozygote genotype would give the frequency of the short phenotype directly. As long as we know how the genotypes match up with the phenotypes, this method always works, whether the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium or not. Now let's think about calculating genotype frequencies from phenotype frequencies. For this, we can use the p squared, 2pq, and q squared equations to get the genotype frequencies, but only if we know that the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. In this case, the frequency of the tall phenotype would be the sum of the frequencies of the two genotypes that correspond to it, which would be p squared plus 2pq. The frequency of the short phenotype would be the frequency of the genotype that corresponds to it, which would be q squared. We could take the square root of both sides of the second equation to get the value of q, and then use the p squared, 2pq, and q squared equations to get the frequencies of the other genotypes. We can get the value of p for these equations from q easily because they both add up to 1. Keep in mind that this only works if the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Unfortunately, we don't have a good way to estimate the genotype frequencies from the phenotype frequencies if it isn't. Now for calculating allele frequencies from genotype frequencies. For this, we can sum the frequencies of the alleles based on the genotype frequencies. If we add the frequency of the capital T homozygote to one half of the frequency of the heterozygote, then we get the frequency of the capital T allele, P. If we add the frequency of the lowercase s homozygote to one half of the frequency of the heterozygote, then we get the frequency of the lowercase s allele, Q. This method will always work, whether the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium or not. There's a second way to calculate the allele frequencies from the genotype frequencies, but only if we can assume Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. In this case, we use the p squared, 2pq, and q squared terms for the genotype frequencies to get the allele frequencies. The frequency of the capital T homozygote equals p squared. So if we take the square root of both sides, then the value of p would be the square root of the homozygous capital T genotype frequency. The frequency of the lowercase s homozygote equals q squared. So if we take the square root of both sides, then the value of q would be the square root of the homozygous lowercase s genotype frequency. The frequency of the heterozygote equals 2pq, and we could use this to answer our question, but this is more complicated and not usually necessary. If you really wanted to use this, you would substitute 1 minus q for p, and then get a quadratic equation. See what I mean about it being more complicated? Again, this is another case which only works if the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Luckily, we have the first way to estimate the allele frequencies from the genotype frequencies if it isn't. Lastly, calculating genotype frequencies from allele frequencies. This is another case in which we require Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium to get our answer. We can use the p squared, 2pq, and q squared terms for the genotype frequencies and plug in the values for p and q that we have since we know the allele frequencies. As mentioned earlier, if the population is not at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, then the genotype frequencies might not match these equations, and unfortunately, there's no alternative way to estimate them. To recap, we can get the phenotype frequencies from the genotype frequencies by summing the genotype frequencies that correspond to each phenotype, and this always works. We can get the genotype frequencies from the phenotype frequencies by using the homozygous phenotype frequencies to estimate the allele frequencies, and then use the p squared plus 2pq plus q squared relationship to get the genotype frequencies, but only if the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. We can get the genotype frequencies from the allele frequencies by using the p squared plus 2pq plus q squared relationship to get the genotype frequencies, but only if the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. We can get the allele frequencies from the genotype frequencies by using the genotype frequencies directly, which always works, or by using the p squared plus 2pq plus q squared relationship if the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. To recap in a slightly different way, if the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, then we can easily move back and forth between the three sets of frequencies. 
When the population is not at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, then we need to have the genotype frequencies to figure out the others. This is why so many examples and classes assume Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Instructors can ask more types of questions. In the real world, though, whether the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is something that has to be determined by comparing at least two of these sets of frequencies to each other. Note also that to go from the genotype frequencies to the phenotype frequencies requires a specified mapping. That is, which phenotypes correspond to which genotypes. There are three basic genotype to phenotype mappings, and really the first two are the same. We could have a situation in which there are two alleles, A and B, in which the A allele is dominant and the B allele is recessive. In this case, when we look at the three genotypes, the AA and AB genotypes give the dominant A phenotype, whereas only the BB genotype gives the recessive B phenotype. We could have a situation in which there are two alleles, A and B, but now the A allele is recessive and the B allele is dominant. In this case, when we look at the three genotypes, only the AA genotype gives the recessive A phenotype, whereas both the AB and BB genotypes give the dominant B phenotype. Or we could have a situation in which there are two alleles, A and B, but they are co-dominant or over-dominant. In this case, the three genotypes are all distinct. The AA homozygous genotype gives the A phenotype, the BB homozygous genotype gives the B phenotype, and the heterozygous genotype gives a third phenotype. In this third case, the correspondence between the genotype and phenotype frequencies are different from the example we looked at in detail. The genotype and phenotype frequencies can be used to directly estimate one another, but we would need to assume Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium to be able to calculate the genotype frequencies from the allele frequencies. Before I do some quick examples of calculations, I'd like to mention three common misconceptions that students often have when learning about Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and calculating these frequencies. First misconception, capital letters always mean dominant alleles. This is often true in classes, but not always. In the real world, the allele names are more complicated, for example, SB for stubble and WT for wild type in a heterozygous Drosophila, and the capitalization is meaningless. Second misconception, dominant is the same as advantageous. This is a super common misconception, so common that I made a video that focuses just on this, which you can see on this channel. Briefly, dominant or recessive merely describe the phenotype of the heterozygote. They don't tell us anything about fitness. In the real world, most l alleles are recessive, but not all are. Final misconception, populations are always at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. This is sometimes true, but not always. We can't assume this unless already known or we compare the allele and genotype frequencies first. Now let's look at some specific examples. Example one, consider a locus with two alleles, V and G, where V is dominant to G. VV homozygotes are violet and GG homozygotes are green. There are 100 individuals, 84 are violet and 16 are green. We ask the question, what are the allele, genotype, and phenotype frequencies? We'll do this twice, once assuming Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and once not assuming Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. First, the case where we assume Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. The frequency of the violet genotype is 84 divided by 100, which is 0.84, and this is equal to p squared plus 2pq under Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium conditions. Instead of solving for p or q here, let's look at the recessive phenotype. The frequency of the green phenotype is 16 divided by 100, which is 0.16, and this is equal to q squared under Heide-Weinberg equilibrium conditions. If q squared equals 0.16, then taking the square root of both sides gives q equals the square root of 0.16, which is 0.4. We know that p plus q equals 1, so we can rearrange this to get p equals 1 minus q equals 1 minus 0.4 equals 0.6 for the value of p. Now that we have values for p and q, we can use the p squared, 2pq, and q squared equations to get the genotype frequencies. The frequency of the VV homozygotes is p squared, which is 0.6 squared, which is 0.36. The frequency of the VG heterozygotes is 2pq, which is 2 times 0.6 times 0.4, which is 0.48. And the frequency of the GG homozygotes is q squared, which is 0.4 squared, which is 0.16. Now the case where we can't assume Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. The frequency of the violet phenotype is 84 divided by 100, which is 0.84, but this is not necessarily equal to p squared plus 2pq. The frequency of the green phenotype is 16 divided by 100, which is 0.16, which may or may not be equal to q squared. Without Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, we don't have a guarantee of the relationship between p squared, 2pq, and q squared to the genotype frequencies. Although we know that 0.84 is the sum of the frequencies of the VV and VG genotypes, and that 0.16 is the frequency of the GG phenotype, we don't know any more than that. Within the 0.84, we don't know how much of that is the frequency of the homozygote and how much of this is the heterozygote. And this is where we get stuck. Without Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, we can't use the data about the phenotype frequencies to get the others. 
For our second example, consider locus with two alleles R and B, which are codominant. RR homozygotes are red, RB heterozygotes are purple, and BB homozygotes are blue. There are 100 individuals, and nine of them are red. We ask the question, what are the allele, genotype, and phenotype frequencies? Again, we'll do this twice, once assuming Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, and once not assuming Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. First, the case where we assume Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. The frequency of the red phenotype is 9 divided by 100, which is 0.09, and this is equal to p squared under Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium conditions. If p squared equals 0.09, then taking the square root of both sides gives p equals the square root of 0.09, which is 0.3. We know that p plus q equals 1, so we can rearrange this to get q equals 1 minus p equals 1 minus 0.3 equals 0.7 for the value of q. Now that we have values for p and q, we can use the p squared, 2pq, and q squared equations to get the genotype frequencies. The frequency of the RR homozygotes is p squared, which is 0.3 squared, which is 0.09. We actually already knew this from before, but it's nice to see that everything is working out the way it should. The frequency of the RB heterozygotes is 2pq, which is 2 times 0.3 times 0.7, which is 0.42. The frequency of the BB homozygotes is q squared, which is 0.7 squared, which is 0.49. Now the case where we can't assume Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. As before, the frequency of the red phenotype is 0.09, but this is not necessarily equal to p squared, and we can't proceed any further to get the allele frequencies. We do know that the frequency of the capital R homozygote is 0.09, however. We know that the sum of the frequencies of the purple and blue phenotypes is 91 divided by 100, which is 0.91, but that doesn't help either, since there's no guarantee that this is equal to 2pq plus q squared, and we don't know either p or q anyway. Again, we're stuck. Although we can estimate one genotype frequency from the one phenotype frequency we have, without Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, we can't use that data to estimate the other two genotype frequencies. On the other hand, if we had all three phenotype frequencies, we would be able to get all the genotype frequencies and then calculate the allele frequencies from those since that wouldn't require Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. For our last example, let's look at something slightly different. Consider a locus with two alleles, D and L, where the dark allele is dominant and the L allele is recessive. DD homozygotes are dark and LL homozygotes are light. Since we've been told that the D allele is dominant, we know that the heterozygotes would have the dark phenotype as well. There are 100 individuals, 20 are DD homozygotes, 50 are DL heterozygotes, and 30 are LL homozygotes. Since we have the genotype frequencies, we know that we can get the other frequencies regardless of whether the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium or not. Now we'll ask two questions. First, what are the allele, genotype, and phenotype frequencies? And second, based on these, is the population at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? First, the genotype frequencies, since they're the easiest. The frequency of the DD homozygous genotype is 20 divided by 100, which is 0.2. The frequency of the DL heterozygous genotype is 50 divided by 100, which is 0.5. And the frequency of the LL homozygous genotype is 30 divided by 100, which is 0.3. The phenotype frequencies will be 0.2 plus 0.5 equals 0.7 for the dark, and 0.3 for the light. For the frequency of the D allele, we take the frequency of the DD homozygote and add half the heterozygote frequency to get 0.2 plus half of 0.5, which is equal to 0.45. For the frequency of the L allele, we take the frequency of the LL homozygote and add half of the heterozygote frequency to get 0.3 plus half of 0.5, which is equal to 0.55. Now we can ask if these values are what we expect for a population at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium with allele frequencies of 0.7 and 0.3. For this, we would compare the observed genotype frequencies to the ones predicted if the population was at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. There are a few ways to do this, but we'll compare the frequencies of the homozygous genotypes. If the population was at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, then the frequency of the DD homozygotes would be p squared, which would be 0.45 squared, which is 0.2025, but that's not equal to the actual observed frequency of 0.2. Likewise, if the population was at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, then the frequency of the LL homozygotes would be q squared, which would be equal to 0.55 squared, which is 0.3025, which is not equal to the observed frequency of 0.3. They're close, but not exactly the same. In the real world, we would never expect the observed frequencies to perfectly match the predicted ones, so we would do some kind of statistical test, probably a chi-squared test, to compare these frequencies. If the predicted and observed frequencies are significantly different, then this population appears to not be at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. 
if the predicted and observed frequencies are not significantly different, then we lack evidence to decide that the population deviates from Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, and we would probably assume it is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium since we don't have the data that would suggest that it differs. The example we just looked at is useful because we are often interested in whether a population is evolving or not. If the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, then the allele frequencies can be used to predict the genotype frequencies, and we have good evidence that no evolution is happening. But if the population is not at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, then the allele frequencies can't be used to predict the genotype frequencies, and we have evidence that some kind of evolution is happening. I hope you found this overview of calculating population genetics frequencies useful. A high resolution PDF of this screen is available on the Evolution Examples website. Like and subscribe to raise the frequency of those kinds of clicks for this video and thereby convince YouTube to share it with more people looking to learn about population genetics. Thank you.